Hey friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Benton, and in this video, I'm gonna answer the question, are there hot women in Miami? This is an important inquiry that requires an extensive investigation. Now, before we get started, you should know, I've been happily married for 10 years now. I am out of this game, but just because I bet all my money on one horse doesn't mean I can't watch the other ones race. This is for all my single brothers out there on the hunt who are considering Miami. I may be able to help you out here. So, men's preferences in what they find attractive in females are based on three factors, evolutionary, cultural, and individual preferences. Let's start with evolutionary. Men generally prefer a low waist to hip ratio. In the words of Sir Mix-a-Lot, when a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. This isn't random. This is biological. Lower waist to hip ratios are associated with higher rates of fertility and increased ability to bear children. Does this trait exist in Miami? You bet your sweet bippy it does. Obesity rates here are some of the lowest in the country. Due to the topography, climate, and urban planning, people often walk and ride their bikes to get around here. This results in a trim waistline and nicely developed lower body muscles, including the gluteus maximus. You'll also find less junk food chains here and more healthy, fresh food. And I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this, but black and Latino women have a notably lower waist to hip ratio. The percentage of these women are higher here in Miami than the national average. Fitness is also an important part of life to the women down here in Miami. If you walk into any gym, you're gonna have to wait in line to use the squat rack. And these healthy, fit, feminine bodies are often showcased in spandex and bikinis. God bless Miami. However, it's not all palm trees and coconuts down here. In my experience, most Miami-dwelling women are not in their peak fertility years. A woman's peak reproductive years are between their late teens to late 20s. However, these women simply simply can't afford to live here. Now, I'm not talking about vacationers or spring breakers here. Most native Miami women are in their 30s, acting like they're in their 20s. The kind of women who are 38 years old who say they want children someday. Somebody really ought to tell these women that 90% of their eggs are dried up by the time they hit 30. If you're a man, you may prefer younger women. You're not a creep. You're not a pervert. There's nothing wrong with you. You are a normal male programmed to seek out fertile women to reproduce with. Feel no shame here and don't ever let any anyone tell you what you should find attractive. So, from an evolutionary standpoint, minus one point for Miami. Okay, cultural influences. What society believes is beautiful. Think lip rings, foot binding, thigh gaps, fake tans, breast implants, etc. When I lived in the Northeast, there was a big push to try and get everyone to believe that obese women were attractive. The Victoria's Secret lost tens of millions of dollars trying to pull this off. Here in Miami, I've noticed the exact opposite. Here, there is a huge cultural push for breast implants, Botox, and fake tans. Oftentimes, when someone thinks of plastic surgery, they think of Los Angeles. However, Miami is the number one city in the U.S. for plastic surgery. In fact, they're number one in the world. Nowhere else on the planet are people so concerned with fitting societal beauty standards. Miamians are unmatched in their willingness to shell out cash and even sacrifice their health to look a certain way. Think Brazilian butt lifts. I even see a lot of women down here permanently deeping their voice by taking steroids to get that firm toned body, which leads me to my third criteria, individual preferences. These personal preferences could pretty much be anything. However, I can really only speak for one person here. You certainly don't have to care about my opinion, but I find this whole giant fake boobs, fake butt, huge lips, thin nose look a little unsettling. So, let's take all this into consideration. Are there beautiful women here in Miami? Absolutely. Of course there are. A lot of them. But, that doesn't necessarily mean that Miami is a good place to look for women. In fact, I would strongly caution you against this, even if you are only looking for short-term sexual relationships. There's a lot more at play here than just looks. Miami is the only fans capital of the world. While many women may seem like they're interested in you, rather than actually hooking up with you, they prefer that you stay home and and send them money via their OnlyFans account. These are wealthy, independent women. They are used to seeing yachts and Lamborghinis on a regular basis. If you're in that league, go for it. But for the average man, these women are very difficult and expensive to impress. Since these women have foregone motherhood, they are obsessed with their dogs. This brings with it all the hassles of dating a single mom. The women down here just don't like men that much. They are content being by themselves and appear comfortable to just be alone forever. 
work. And you never know if the body part that you're touching was made in a factory. So how about long-term monogamous relationships? This is probably the worst place in the world to find that special someone. I could make an entire video on this alone, but you probably don't need me to explain it to you. However, if you are planning to travel to find a wife, I applaud you for being intentional in your decisions. But I would suggest going a little further south, like the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, or Colombia, something like that. But if you are going to date in Miami, here are some positives. Some areas, like Little Havana, have a lot of Latino influence. These women tend to hold more traditional values and have a more family-centric culture. Miami women are lots of fun. They like to party and have a good time. I am amazed by how fearless they are. They whip around on their e-scooters in heavy traffic like they are warrior princesses. If you're looking for a sugar mama, there's no better place. There's no lack of diversity here. You can meet people on vacation from all over the world. And most importantly, as a straight man, you are unlikely to encounter secret transgenders here. On the West Coast and most blue states, this is a real concern. I was a cop for 10 years in Maryland. People actually called the police about this all the time. Usually it was a John who met up with a prostitute that turned out to be a guy. The John wanted his money back and the prostitute would call in a failure to pay. So thankfully in Florida, at least for now, you don't have have to worry about chicks with dicks. I hope that you found this information useful. I'm Sam Benton, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.